and assalamu alaikum this is gulelala from scientia and today we have our seventh webinar of the series on science writing internship cohort 2 and we are excited to welcome dr faisal rahman for today's webinar to talk about blockchain and ai in media to uh, before we begin i would like to introduce that dr faisal rahman is a co-founder and cto of blockchain laboratories llc he is also a resident scientist known as an associate professor at LUMS. Uh, I would like to add he is also the um, advisory board member at uh, Scientia. And he works in diversified fields like astrophysics, data science, blockchain, and software engineering. Uh, Dr. Faisal Rahman is currently also working with two main radio astronomy collaborations, which is quite interesting as we <clears throat> proceed on. I would like to know more about these collaborations. So let's not wait anymore. And welcome, Sir um, Professor Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And great to see uh, students uh, uh, coming in science journal journalism because we need a lot of them. Uh, a lot of people are doing research, but uh, I think there's a uh, very uh, serious need of having some people who can communicate science well to the general public. And I think science communicate journalists and uh, communicators can do this uh, better than a lot of scientists. So mm -hmm. even I struggle to communicate uh, complex concepts uh, with general public, but uh, I see a lot of work being done by Sadika, Fawz, and, and you guys. So Thank and you, that is a very fabulous work because you, you are presenting, uh, introducing a lot of uh, new and interesting science areas to the people of Pakistan. And I hope you will do will you will continue your great work in the future. Inshallah, thank you, sir. So as most of the participants have connected, I think we can begin. And you may share the screen. Yeah. Can you see it? Uh no, not so far. Now we can. Perfect. Okay. So the topic is blockchain and AI in media. So I will try to cover both how uh, media can cover uh, blockchain and, and uh, AI. Uh, and also at the same time, I will introduce some of the features uh, in blockchain, uh, blockchain and AI, which can help uh, the people in media. Uh, I am Saeed Faisal uh, I am working with Blockchain Laboratories as co-founder and CTO. I'm also working as a resident scientist at LAMS. I'm on the advisory board of, of NCBC National Center for Big Data and Cloud Computing and Entity and also advisory board member at Scientia Magazine, which is your host uh, institution for this, this, this internship. OK, so let's start. Uh, the contents of these, uh, uh, this presentation are blockchain technology and artificial intelligence introduction, opportunities created by blockchain technology, opportunities created by artificial intelligence, and then I will uh, discuss some uh, uh, the need of having uh, a balanced coverage of uh, blockchain and AI in media. And then finally, a note on some key considerations for science journalism. I uh, uh, discussed them in my uh, presentation in cohort one as well, but I thought it should be, uh, it, it is important to discuss them again uh, as they can, you know, every science journalist need to have some uh, fundam uh, to know some fundamentals about how to present their work and how to present the work of uh, being done in the in science and technology to the general public. So introduction uh, in the ever evolving landscape of media and journalism, staying abreast of technological innovations is paramount. It's not necessary that you are you become an expert on each and every science and technology topic, but uh, it, you should have some background or some uh credible information related to the field you are working in and and credit to the field credit to the area you are doing reporting for so so that uh, whatever you are presenting you you should know that it is authentic and credible uh, so that your audience can it's so leadership and audience can be informed in a proper way it is your ethical and professional responsibility to train yourself uh, to uh, at least familiarize yourself with certain topics, especially if you are reporting on them. Two transformative forecasts 
uh, forces that are reshaping the way information is created is formation is created is disseminated and consumed are blockchain technology and artificial intelligence both are being used not only in media and many other fields so it will be good for you to know a bit about them let's first take an overview of blockchain technology and artificial intelligence first is blockchain so let me just increase the size Okay. Blockchain is blockchain is a decentralized and distributed ledger that records transactions across a network of computers. Unlike traditional centralized systems uh, which use traditional databases, blockchain operates on a consensus mechanism ensuring transparency, security, and immutability, immutability of data. Immutability means temper proofing of the data. The technology rose to prominence as the un underpinning of cryptocurrencies like Blockchain has since found applications far beyond uh, like Bitcoin, but it has since found applications far beyond the financial sector. So blockchain initially came to prominence with the emergence of Bitcoin and then Ethereum and other, uh, uh, but uh, uh, financial uh, uh, finance related applications. But then now it is finding uh, its way, its uh, applications in many other fields like supply chains, media, uh, digital assets, even ESG and carbon credits. Uh, so that is something uh, which you will see in the future, like you are encountering database. So you will be hearing a lot about blockchain in the future. And, and uh, I think you already hang a lot about it in, uh, uh, somehow in one way or another. Key concepts related to blockchain and technology, decentralization. Blockchain eliminates the need for central authority focusing trust among participants. It means no, no, uh, no, no, or at least no dominant central authority controls uh, the blockchain networks. Uh, there are blockchain networks which are uh, controlled by corporate sector, but they are not public blockchain sectors. Public blockchains like uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, certain other are not controlled by single entity uh, but they are controlled by uh, multiple uh, a, a lot of uh, nodes participating in the network so there is a sort of a democratization of information control and not control in front information protection and immutability and transparency uh, immutability once information is added to the blockchain it becomes nearly impossible to alter ensuring data integrity since multiple nodes are involved multiple parties are involved to ensure transparency tampering uh, is almost impossible smart context self executing contracts coded to the blockchain automating and ensuring the enforcement of predefined agreements means it adds further credibility if let's say if you have a smart contract on rental properties uh, uh, you won't need uh, or, or ownership of certain asset once you meet the criteria and the smart smart contract executes automatically that means uh, the parties engaged in, uh, in in a certain agreement uh, have very little chance of backing uh, or, or cheating uh, the other party fungible tokens uh, interchangeable units value like just similar to a normal currency like you have one rupee which is uh, you have let's say a 10 rupee note it will have the same value of another 10 rupee note so it's not like one 10 rupee note is more expensive than another 10 rupee note it's 10 rupees the purchasing power will be same nfts non fungible tokens are different from fungible tokens they present unique digital assets with individual identities and ownership so nfts are likely the ones which don't have the same value two pieces of art don't have same value two similar paintings will uh, will also uh, can also differ based on how they reach to the users like some somebody has uh, painted two similar paintings in 1930s but one of them was stolen by nazis the other one went through a normal uh, uh, process and reached to uh, some museum today they both will have different values based on the history of their origin and history of their transferring 
that's what we call provenance so uh, based on that. all the, these are the information portals they bridge the gap between blockchains and the real world feeding external data into smart contract so uh, uh, are these uh, things clear to you or you have questions about it should i proceed um, so anyone who has any questions about the information discussed so far can share them. Uh, I think we can uh, also introduce the term blockchain because it uh, seems like a new thing for the participants. So in what kind of fields is blockchain being used? And uh... Okay, yeah. So... Uh... For instance, you have a piece of art. There's a platform called OpenSea. People sell their pieces of art. So what happens is that each asset gets a gets a hash, and uh, identity means a unique identity, and it has an ownership based on the blockchain address of that. So you are certain that coming from blockchain and it's not tampered. So all the ownership rights. Uh, of that of that asset is clear so blockchain what, what blockchain does is that it provides like you have a normal database where you have like uh, uh, you know entry about the name of the person or you have a bank account database you have a name of a person the account number and the money that person is holding so you uh, that is stored usually in the normal databases but that is controlled by a bank uh, and the database is uh, is you know uh, vulnerable to attacks and data can be changed account uh, something uh, th a lot of things we see uh, happen with accounts uh, uh, digital accounts uh, as well in banks so yeah. what yeah, black yeah. blockchain does is that it provides a temp temper proofing mechanism so that uh, you know uh, multiple nodes are involved globally so that makes it almost impossible for, for any party to you know uh, change that information so can think of blockchain as a ledger or ledger accounting ledger or a register you have the only thing Perfect. is that the register is immutable and more transparent it, it is visible to multiple parties so that nobody can secretly change it or stuff like that all right thank you so much and muntaha is uh, raising hand uh, she can share the question yes hello am i audible yes yes you are Sir, I don't understand the details about NFT. You have explained the NFT. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Description. So NFT, NFT, like fungible tokens, are for fungible tokens is for things like cryptocurrencies. Or uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, they 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 have same value. Like one Ethereum, one Ether will have same value as the other Ether. Like you have one 10 rupee note has exactly same value as the other 10 rupee notes. But NFT is more about for things like art, pieces of art, pieces of art, digital pieces of art, or uh, tokenization of your real house, but contract in a paper form. So, two pieces of NFTs uh, will likely don't uh, will likely not have even the similar pieces won't have likely have a uh, same value. The values can differ. So, for example, two paintings, uh, pa uh, art values. Uh, so, and can be a piece of art uh, nft can be a piece of music uh, a piece of painting art or music of, of art form so you know two songs uh, uh, don't necessarily have same value because one song is uh, better than another it can be a better a lot better than another song uh, so you know uh, nft is for the pieces of arts and things which can't be well uh, which can be which do, don't have standardized values all right uh, so as far as i understand i think the um, objects which have a, a qualitative value like subjective uh, kind of yeah. thing that has a different value but yeah. objective uh, things uh, like money and quantities have same value identical that does not change and we have yeah. aliza vakar over here she also has raised hand aliza you can okay assalamu alaikum 
um do you think that the like i've read a lot about nfts and i tried to you know do something in them but i realized ke the value or the you know hype about it kind of died down throughout the years so like is is there any value to it still yeah i will discuss it in 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 in, uh, in uh, further slides uh, what possible uses are there and po- what possible uses can be there as well so i will discuss some of okay. them and you will see that it's not going to die soon it's going okay. to grow so i will just proceed with some of uh, after covering certain things i will uh, covering a uh, basics about artificial intelligence i am now uh, i will then go to the opportunities created by blockchain so you will see okay some, some things okay so artificial intelligence have a basic quick uh, introduction of that artificial intelligence is a broad broad field encompassing development of machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence so it's that's why we call it artificial intelligence it's not they're coming from brains uh, it's computers working like human brain and computer intelligence uh, working like human intelligence so key concepts related to i these are some of the key concepts you will see a lot of other stuff as well but i'm just covering some basics here so so that you know most of the people can understand so uh, machine learning is a subset of ai machine learning involves algorithms that learn from data and improve over time without explicit programming so you uh, these models evolve with the data feed it uh, being fed to them and they then they uh, you know um, take decisions so you you see a lot of uh, a lot of such friend suggestion and stuff like that that comes from uh, on facebook or linkedin you see connection suggestions these they come from uh, machine learning based on your past interest past engagements with other thing is similarly uh, when you are purchasing something you see ads related to your interest to the website you have visited because machine uh, systems are be, uh, learning from the data you are generating with your online activity natural language processing enables machines to understand interpret and generate human language enhancing communication between humans and computers and we are seeing their applications in large language mobile large language models llms and uh, in, in the applications like chat gpt and others so i think uh, that uh, that is coming from the natural language processing computer vision allows machines to interpret and make decisions based on visual data opening avenues for image and video analysis so you have things like uh, object recognition stuff like that even in uh, uh security applications you have people are using them and that can, um, in medical imaging it is also being used for medical applications as well uh, to you know diagnose, diagnose tumors or Uh, stuff like that uh, so that is these are the key areas and i uh, which you can explore further uh, i will cover some of the uh, the stuff in later slides as well so first is opportunities created by blockchain technology some application blockchain applications beyond cryptocurrency so so these are the applications which uh, uh, some these are some of the applications like supply chain transparency you have the ownership proof of sys blockchain records are immutable so you have ownership and origin proof can be stored on blockchain so that all the parties not a, all the parties involved can see them for example uh, some some uh, piece of uh, let's say some some amount of uh, uh, like uh, wheat uh, coming from pakistan uh, and uh, let's say some some authority has certified it to be let's say healthy or uh, let's say some other uh, label is being assigned to it and that a thing can be put on blockchain uh, so that the uh, the buyers of that product can uh, find credibility in uh, in its uh, origin and having it certified or something by some authority that can be done uh, carbon footprint tracking so uh, you can again uh, supply chain related uh you can uh, c- check uh, the origin of the product and how you can have certification body certifying it on blockchain uh, uh, that uh, this uh, this uh, was done with low carbon footprint or some uh, or net zero process and uh, similarly carbon credits are being assigned on blockchain uh, we at blockchain laboratories are working with partners like interesting method to uh, 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 assign uh, to give carbon credits based uh to sell give and sell carbon credits uh 
based on different ecological projects after being verified by uh, uh, by validators, uh, uh, accreditation bodies and validators. Renewable energy trading, again, uh, energies, uh, 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 the assets can be tokenized or the tokens can be used as a currency to buy energy units and stuff like that. Blockchain for IoT, a lot of data will be shared by IoT that can be used via blockchains to certify the ownership and uh, stuff like that. Ownership of digital assets. So these assets can be anything, uh, art, piece of art, piece of certificates, your degree certificates, even some of the universities like Nicosia are working, I have uh, developed uh, pro uh, programs where they are offering certificates on uh, uh, certificates on blockchain via NFT. So this is a blockchain landscape. Uh, uh, for now, you see, and this is not complete. It's not the all. all the, it's a lot bigger industry. This is just for 2023. Uh, you can check the source blocks uh, on this. Uh, so here. Yeah. And you can see uh, applications for media and influencers as well, opportunities for them. And then there are other opportunities as well. So the landscape is growing as the application areas of applications are growing. Media, OK. Overlooked aspects in Pakistani media. That's why some confusion arise. People see certain cryptocurrency is going down so people think blockchain is you know is not going to survive because it's, there's a very limited coverage of non cryptocurrency blockchain applications neglect of blockchain role in iot esg carbon credits and supply chain which is increasing rapidly and our media is not covering it that much and hopefully as science communicate uh, uh, enthusiastic science communicators and journalists you are going to change this Opportunity for, for the media to broaden coverage beyond spe speculative assets. Speculative assets also have NFTs, so like things like crypto punks and stuff like that. These are also speculative assets. And even in NFTs, media only cover that part. Not, let's say, carbon credit certificates. Let's say some company is planning to go net zero. They emit certain amount of carbon dioxide. So to offset that, they buy carbon credits via blockchain, uh, uh, which are related to a project. Uh, let's say Pakistan has billion tree tsunami project. So somebody can uh, uh, sell carbon credits related to that as well. And that will not only help Pakistan in buying, uh, in having uh, generating revenue, but the companies which would like to go net zero, they can say, OK, we emit that much amount of carbon dioxide, but we then offset it uh, with, with, with the then data offset by purchasing, uh, by investing in the uh, in billion tree tsunami project. and. Here is the proof on the blockchain, immutable proof on the blockchain uh, in the form of uh, blockchain issued, uh, blockchain based carbon credits. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for Pakistani media to cover these things in details and explore these avenues. Tips for media coverage on blockchain beyond cryptocurrencies, diversify coverage, explore applications like IoT, ESG, and carbon credits. A lot of material is there online. I have given some links in the end as well. Collaborate with experts, engage professionals to provide insights and context. OK, so there are experts available in Pakistan and also Pakistan who will be happy to help. And uh, educational content, break down complex concepts for a wider audience. That's something where science communicators play a key role, because not all the experts can explain it to the general public. So when you uh, get their opinion, you will also add your own Plus, uh, you know, you can uh, uh, make it easy for the general public to understand those expert views. Highlight real world impact, show, showcase practical applications and success stories. There are a lot of, uh, uh, so there are a lot of pro projects, uh, cha even charities are using blockchain based uh, technologies uh, of, to add credibility to their charity process. Consider global perspectives, explore international advancements and collaborations. That's when you need to work. Uh, because it is important to you know, uh, uh, understand what the world, uh, how the world is using these technologies. Uh, because in Pakistan, technologies usually come a bit late, as we are not that advanced at the moment. We do have people who are expert, 
who are you know working uh, in these cutting edge areas but uh, but they are uh, we as a country are not you know very advanced in in, in terms of this so our, our industry uh, so our media also need to engage with international industry as well challenges and solutions in media coverage Ch the first challenge is technical complexity solution use analogies and real world examples to simplify so like i use the example of how an accounting book or register can be uh, uh, used as an example for blockchain you can use try and have better examples you, as science communicators you will surely do a better job than me than explaining uh, these concepts and uh, hopefully uh, i think scientia can uh, scientia's internship program will help you in learning that challenge lack of awareness solution conduct interviews with experts to explain and educate so that's what it's the that you will uh, try to engage with academia and industry a, a lot so that you can have some information about the topic you are covering, like blockchain. Challenge sensationalism. Focus on factual reporting and avoiding hype. So uh, sensationalism actually does a lot of disservice. You know, click debate type journalism does a lot of disservice. And that's where the problem is coming with blockchain as well. Uh, blockchain is facing this problem as well. Like there's a whole whole lot of hype about people becoming suddenly billionaires and millionaires using cryptocurrencies and then suddenly losing a lot of their uh, a whole of their wealth so people only think blockchain as some sort of speculative assets uh, risky high risk high reward return investment type of things instead of its other applications which i discussed earlier so blockchain enhancing transparency trust in science communication so how science communication can help can get benefit from blockchain in immutable data records, blockchain technology create a temple-proof record of this research data, methodology, and results, fostering transparency and trust in scientific science findings. This can be particularly valuable in fields like climate science or drug discovery, where data integrity is crucial. So it's similar to database, but it can it is temple-proof a, a lot more. Collaborative research platforms, blockchain-based platforms can facilitate secure and transparent collaboration between researchers across institutions and geographical boundaries. This can accelerate scientific progress uh, uh, and encourage knowledge sharing. Verifying scientific authorship and provenance. So you, NFTs, like NFTs, uh, protect the on, authorship as well, uh, based on uh, blockchain-based addresses and uh, the people connected with those addresses. The blockchain can be used to verify the authorship and prominence of scientific prominence is the how a certain asset is uh, when and how a certain asset is generated and uh, you know communicated or uh, reached to a certain place prominence of scientific publications combating plagiarism and ensuring the authenticity of research outputs so now a bit more about the nfts for media ownership and the uh, i hope it will also answer the question asked as well Ownership and mon uh, monetization of digital content. Journalists and creators can use NFTs to represent ownership of their work, such as articles, photographs, and video or videos. This allows them to sell their work directly to audiences and capture a large share of the value. It means instead of going through powerful media outlets, journalists will be able to sell their uh, you know work directly to the audience. Unique digital collections, collectibles. Limited edition NFTs of exclusive content behind the screen, behind the scenes experiences or interviews with journalists can be offered to readers, fostering deeper engagement in generating new revenue streams. Factional ownership of media says factional ownership is not only related to real estate assets or stuff like that, where you can have a portion of the property. Uh, factional ownership also work it can be uh, you know uh, uh, used in media. NFTs can be factionalized, allowing multiple individuals to co-own, for example. A news organization or documentary film, uh, uh, film democratizing ownership and raising capital. So you can have a documentary and you can say one person is owned by Faos, one person is owned by Golalai, and there. So you can record that ownership on the uh, uh, NFT platform on, on blockchain via NFTs, and then whatever benefits which will come, they will get the reward accordingly. Prominence and authenticity verifications. NFT can be linked to media content, creating an immutable record of ownership and authenticity. That's what uh, I discussed earlier. Combating plagiarism and misinformation. So uh, your ownership will be protected if you have created a piece of digital art, let's say a music piece of, uh, you have a song or uh, some uh, exclusive image like 
uh, like I think there was an example when somebody took a picture of uh, Abbott about operation uh, when when Osama was killed, Osama Laden was killed, and then that photograph was sold for thousands of dollars. So you can have that kind of asset which you can uh, uh, convert it into NFT, and you can uh, have an authorship or uh, ownership proof ownership proof of that asset. So here NFT, uh, these are just some of the examples. NFTs can have a, a, a other applications in the future as well. And there's a thing for oracles for media. Oracles I discussed earlier are uh, sort of uh, bridge the gap between the real world and blockchain. So blockchain uh, sometimes use information like some cryptocurrency or stable coin is pegged with uh, gold price. So you need a gold price from the real world. For that, Oracle systems are used to integrate real world information with blockchain networks. So, so you can also use them for media as well. Fact checking and verification oracles can connect smart contracts to real world data sources, allowing for automated fact checking of claims and media to claims media in news or reports. So, claims in media, uh, so made, claims made in news articles or reports. Uh, I think a lot of opportunities also there for media outlets to. To, uh, uh, to introduce Oracle services because they have information they can, uh, you know, uh, monetize that information by uh, placing uh, by using them as Oracles for the blockchain networks so that other blockchain applications can use them. Decentralized content mod moderation Oracles can be used to create decentralized content moderation systems uh, where uh, where communities collectively decide on the validity and trustworthiness of information, reducing reliance on centralized platforms. So it is more like democratizing the content model. Decentralization introduced the democratization of the content. And it has it can be go both ways, but uh, most of uh, if a community of reliable uh, of uh, um, uh, related uh, people in the field are there, let's say there's a community of journalists, they all would like to have a temper proof vote on authenticity of, a, uh, of some news item, they can do that. Triggering smart contracts based on real world events. Oracles can enable smart contracts automatically execute action based on real world events, such as releasing bonus payments to journalists upon achieving a specific engagement metrics. So, uh, let's say uh, there's some website starts uh, offers journalists some reward based on how much uh, their articles are viewed. So, as soon as that reach a specific number, smart contract will automatically execute and give reward to the journalist without any person sitting to decide whether to do it or not. That will so uh, reducing the uh, issue of bias or nepotism. Rewarding user contributions. Oracles can facilitate rewarding users for contributing data or verifying information, fostering community involvement and participation in media, in the media ecosystem. That can also be applied on social media as well. Now come to the opportunities created by artificial intelligence. So, let me know if you have any question or confusions related to the opportunities created uh, by blockchain for media. So that we can proceed next. Should I proceed? Uh, I think uh, you can proceed as far we don't have any queries. Or if there are, please, um, you can comment or maybe raise your hand. Uh, seems like everyone everything is clear. We can okay. go ahead. Yeah. Opportunities created by artificial intelligence. So a lot of opportunities are being created. These are some of the opportunities. Uh, you can have a lot of opportunities created by artificial intelligence for media. Enhanced research, accelerated information retrieval. AI algorithms can swiftly sift through vast data sets, exped uh, expediting the research process for science writers and enabling quicker access to relevant information so a lot of work is already being done uh, big media houses already using it to uh, search relevant information based on whatever articles they are writing whatever piece of journalism they are writing they have records they have a lot of data of their own and they can also access data from other sources as well to uh, get uh, quicker access to information data analysis driving insights driving insights for in-depth reporting but sometimes you need to uh, uh, let's say you you have a uh, hundred pages of documentation. <clears throat> you want to get key highlights, so AI can help with that. 
and so it will take, save a lot of your time uh, and sometimes you have a huge let's say uh, 3000 words article and you want to summarize it uh, get key critical insights so that you can comment on uh, write your own uh, uh, information based on that uh, write your own write up based on that so so you can also do that so ai powered analytics can dis distill complex scientific data aiding science writers in extracting meaningful insight for in depth and informed reporting automated fact checking ensuring accuracy and precision this does not apply to the, there are special tools uh, which are used by news agencies and big organizations as well ai tools can assist in fact checking enhancing the precision and reliability of science writing so uh, but with chatgpt and, and uh, bard you need to be a bit careful because they are not uh, you know uh, specialized fact checking tools personalized explanations uh, so there's a concept of fine tuning where you you have you you can to take the chat gpt tools to type uh, open ai a api and then connect it with your credible or reliable data source or use data source and then uh, the ai will quickly swift through it and when you need to fact check in future you can use uh, those tools or you can have some specialized tools as well Personalized explanations. AI can tailor explanations of complex scientific concepts to different audience levels, making scientific information more accessible to a wider range of readers. For example, for for this, I needed to explain certain topics like NFTs and molecules in a relatively simple way for non-computer science background uh, people. So I took help from Bard and ChatGPT as well to uh, you know. Uh, uh, remove unnecessary jargon so one of the examples i can i'm giving it is from physics so hopefully you will like it the so example is using bard gemini by google uh, i have given the prompt uh, to bard and uh, which is now called gemini explain quantum mechanics to cowboys so talk about cowboys so uh, if you have seen western uh, western movies so you know uh, it generated an interesting content so you will see uh, have uh, read it a bit so we start from there so you can see it has you started to use language style which we often see in movies and literature which are associated with cowboys you know and the language style as well not just the jargon like grazing or stuff like that but also the language style them is m and stuff like that um Check sir, i think yeah. uh, someone has raised their hand uh, might be wanting to share some question all yeah, right yeah. that was a mis mistaken uh, click all right. Okay. So if anyone but, wants to read this out, maybe they get, can zoom it in. It will be great if you, uh, uh, if somebody can explain me what is happening with the content, like uh, what features you are uh, extracting, or what understanding you are getting, how, how AI is uh, uh, has explained quantum mechanics in, so that cowboys, uh, in, in a way, cowboys will, will understand. All right. Yes, anyone would like to answer this question? Uh, all right, uh, is there any answer to this question in the comment? How would AI explain uh, things uh, which are usually explained with the help of jargons to someone like a layman, like a cowboy? Is that the question? Yeah. So what do you think uh, is happening here? Like, is it able to make it easier for them by giving re relevant information, uh, using relevant examples, or is it making it harder? OK, Muntaha Sheikh has raised hand. She would like to answer, maybe? Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. So basically, AI can help uh, the layperson's to extract the basic information. But when we go beyond that, like for extracting the scientific researches and the uh, new uh, new stories and new breakthroughs in the scientific matter or technology, so 
AI can complexify the situation. So basically, what is happening here? The AI is adding a context. It is commenting based on the context. It has information about quantum mechanics and uh, you know the textbook information there in the data, but it is now adding a new context, like explaining it to a cow, explaining it to cowboys, mm -hmm. uh, so that you know. And it also has literature related to cowboys and data related to how, how access to the data related to how cowboys work based on the literature, movies, and everything like that. And then it is combining both things in in and while generating this content. So this is All right. uh, you can do similar with your science journalism work. You can have a complex topic like blockchain technology and say, I want, and you have written a lot of these points. And let's say you have a huge paragraph with the help uh, by taking in views from experts and stuff like that. But then you realize, OK, it's a bit complicated for, let's say, I'm writing a science book for fifth graders. Uh, I'm writing mm -hmm. this piece of article for fifth graders. So you can give a prompt to uh, Bard or ChatGPT by giving them the content and say, convert it so that uh, uh, you know fifth graders can understand it. So it, it will have a data about the level of fifth graders understanding and then to incorporate adjust the articles based on that but it may not have not happen in one iteration you will have to go through multiple iterations by giving fine tuning and you know giving multiple instructions after giving mm -hmm. giving some feedback so it also learns from the feedback too so this yeah. way you can improve your science writing as well <clears throat> opportunities created by artificial intelligence again mm -hmm. transparency Sir, uh, we have Another answer over here by Insia, who says, I guess, improving simulations and quantum algorithms. Um, she shared her answer relevant to the previous question. OK, yeah. And uh, Muntaha Sheikh has also raised her hand. Maybe uh, she can um, question right now or at the end of the session. What do you say? Uh, we can take uh, some questions at the end of the session as well, because some of them will be answered in the slide as well. Perfect. So we do that at the end of the session. All okay. right. Transparency and attribution. So some of the opportunities, again, more are clearly disclose the use of AI. Uh, OK, this is not the, uh, OK. Uh, it's not opportunities. Basically, some of the considerations I uh, uh, the headline uh, uh, isn't correct. Uh, the title is incorrect. I, I uh, made a mistake in the title. Title should be uh, key considerations while uh, using AI for media. Transparency and attribution clearly disclose the use of AI in content creation. I have, uh, so I am disclosing it. I have used both ChatGPT and Bart Dimna for both this presentation to improve the writing style and brainstorming. Attribute generated content to the AI model alongside human contributors. Avoid misrepresentation, representing AI generated content as purely human authored. So you have to be transparent and uh, clearly attribute, uh, use clear attribution, accuracy, and bias. Fact check and edit AI generated content rigorously to ensure accuracy and avoid factual errors. So whatever being generated by, if you are using AI based tools, I suggest don't use them for information. I use uh, information from the direct source as your journalist and, at, and use uh, journalistic standards for verification of this data. But if you are using at, uh, at part, of, part of your analysis or something, at least do fact checking of this uh, to for it. Be mindful of potential biases present in the training of data of AI models, which can be reflected in generated content. So AI data is generated be before, before the generation of data. It gets strained on, on data as well. So the models which are uh, being trained can have biases based on whatever data is being fed to them. So you have to be mindful of that, and you have to, you know, uh, fact check that too. Implement strategies to mitigate bias and ensure fair and balanced representation. So that is also very important. Ethical consideration: avoid generating content that is harmful, misleading, or promotes discrimination for example uh, you have uh, bias people have, can have bias about certain communities like in western media we see bias against muslims so if a data set so certain uh, of, of well, let's say arabs or black community uh, 
or other uh, other uh, uh, vulnerable communities so because sometimes if the data is trained on analysis of the people who are themselves are biased or the data which has hasn't been uh, cleaned for biases the model generated or the uh, gen, uh, decision generated by ai based on that will also have some certain bias so us use ai responsibly and ethically considering its potential impact on society be mindful of potential for ai generated content to be misused for propaganda or manipulation human oversight and control maintain human oversight throughout the content creation process using ai as a tool to augment not replace human judgment ensure editorial uh, control over the final content and messaging clearly define the purpose and intended audience for ai generated content legal and regulatory issues be aware of potential copyright intellectual property related to ai generated content this is happening especially with dell e and other uh, 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 image generating tools as well people are claiming that their work is being fed to ai for the training data sets and so what is well is it being generated by the ai uh, is uh, has all their intellectual work uh, uh, being used in that and that is being done without consent so people are demanding reward for that understand and comply with relevant regulations regarding data privacy and responsible ai use so ai is, uh, responsible ai use is very important because there are certain things uh, like issues like privacy data privacy misuse uh, ownership of data which and consent issues like consent and issues like misuse of ai for you know breaching privacy via surveillance technology and stuff like that are also there so you have to be mindful of all these considerations remember ai is a powerful tool but it's not substitute to human creativity critical thinking and ethical judgment use ai responsibly and transparently to enhance media content while upholding ethical principles and ensuring positive societal impact so this is the landscape and again high resolution images then the links i will uh, send these slides uh, to foz and he will distribute it to you guys uh, to you so these are some of the uh, like ai applications I, again this is not uh, a comprehensive list a lot of companies are missing there but you will get certain idea that which companies are working in you know ai related uh, uh, in sub which sub area of ai so you can see that need of a now this is something related to how uh, some tips related to how media should cover it need of a balance between even evangelical and doomsday forecasting approaches to, to cover blockchain and ai in media so evangelical approach is like you are only considering benefits and you creating a hype about certain thing and doomsday is like the only covering that ai is going to take over or blockchain is going to doom stuff like that you need to have a balanced approach the pitfall what are the pitfalls of extreme narratives evangelical hype over promising over promises unrealistic benefits and otherwise create unrealistic explanation leading to disappointment and skepticism can lead to unsustainable investment bubbles and market crashes we see it that people investing all their retirement funds in uh, in companies uh, related to ai or blockchain or some uh, people investing all their money on certain cryptocurrencies and then losing a lot of the chunk of their money because they think every uh, it will rise uh, the stocks will rise every time or the tokens will rise uh, will have uh, higher prices uh, every time based on these evangelical hype approach another one is doomsday approach exaggerate this sense overlooks potential benefits so things like ai is going to take over and creating a terminator movies like scenario like skynet is going to take over it's not also going to help because it then people overlook the benefit it can provide creates unnecessary fear and discourages exploration and innovation can hinder progress and adoption potential transformative technologies so again focusing only on doomsday scenarios will not help anyone people will look, overlook and you know don't participate in uh, in the activities which can actually benefit humanity so we discussed some of the things previously ai is also being used like uh, in media medical sciences as well to detect uh, diseases uh, and stuff like that uh, uh, text generation is also helping content writers so there are a lot of benefits uh, involved to cover them and 
also cover uh, the some of the ethic, ethical issues involved in these things. Finding the middle ground, a balanced approach. Acknowledge both potential benefits and challenges of AI and blockchain in media. Provide evidence-based information and avoid sensationalized claims, mainly used for clickbait. Uh, avoid them, especially as science journalists. Focus on realistic timelines and achievable goals. Promote responsive, like you can't say that it is going to be, uh, something is going to be multi-trillion dollar business in coming months. Have expert opinion, uh, consult with experts, and you know have a realistic scenario. Promote responsible development and ethical considerations. Encourage critical thinking and informed decision making. Some key considerations for science journalists, science journalism, accuracy and fact checking. Ensure information is reliable and evidence based through rigorous fact checking and consulting scientific experts. These are general guidelines, not just for blockchain and AI coverage. Simplifying complex concepts makes scientific ideas understandable to general public using clear language, analogies, and visual aids. Context and balance provide proper context, including limitations and implications of research, and present a balanced view by including diverse perspectives. Transparency in sources and conflicts of interest. Be transparent about sources and disclose any potential conflicts of interest to maintain trust and credibility. Uh, so that you know, uh, when you're writing an article and if you are getting funded by some uh, let's say we are getting funded by some blockchain company. You need to clearly mention at the end of that this article is being uh, uh, funded by these things. Don't present advertisements as a as an impartial piece of analysis. So, uh, ethical reporting adhere to ethical standards, respecting privacy, avoid plagiarism, and treating scientific subjects with integrity and fairness. So these are some of the references and sources. I have used some of them, and I have also used both ChatGPT and Bart Gemini for this presentation to improve the writing style and brainstorming. You can also visit these articles to improve your learning more. There are other sources of information as well. Also, blog, uh, like a, uh, our company, Blockchain Laboratory, is hosting an event uh, called Digital Assets, <coughs> which is aimed, uh, which is aiming to you know, take uh, inform academia and industry and media personnel about the use of uh, digital assets and blockchain technology for ESG. So uh, you can visit them. Uh, the website is esgdigitalassets.com. And uh, let me know. So, any questions? That's it from my side. Yes, so if there are any questions, you can either uh, put them in the chat or raise your hand. It was definitely a really informative session, and Muntaha Sheikh uh, wants to share a question. Yes. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Um, I wanted to ask that uh, how the prompt and the uh, uh, information we provide to the AI chatbots uh, is uh, necessary, like how is prompt engineering is necessary for getting the output from chatbot. Yeah, good question. So prompt engineering is, is, a, is also becoming a very, you know, important uh, thing. The basic idea is to, you know, you need to have, like you are explaining an in, uh, Always uh, tell people to treat it like an assistant, junior assistant of your company. So, excuse me. So, like you want to be uh, provide clear, uh, you need to give clear instructions to your assistant or about about uh, some task. So, you, you should give prompts in that manner as well. <laughs> the better you will explain your queries to your to the uh, tool like ChatGPT or Bard. The better outcomes you can have from that system as well, and also like it's there's no 
a good way is to have a, an iterative approach. Like you got get a get a response from that system, and then based on that response, you ask more questions. Then they, it will generate another response. So you will have a continuous improvement process in that. Perfect. So even I want to share something as I'm a teacher, uh, I'm teaching some middle uh, grade level. So I use ChatGPT often uh, to summarize or make questions for the particular grade level that I'm teaching. That really helps me doing that. However, during the research time when I used ChatGPT to help me um, with the research um, questions, it did not quite help me much. So I think there comes the role of this. Uh, the particular specific things, it is not much trained to answer them. But to generalize the difficult things, that it uh, really helps with. And we have another question with Kainath. She's raising her hand. Uh, adding to that, basically, there are different types of AI tools, like ChatGPT and Bard or Gemini are more general purpose. So you, you, for specialized tools, like if you're working on physics or mm -hmm. biological sciences, you will need mm -hmm. to fine tune those models. On There are ways to you know fine tune them by uh, having, uh, you will require, of course, programming for that. And you, know, you will need to have the uh, expert knowledge of computer, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning from the level of software development, uh, related mm -hmm. to software development as well. So you can fine tune them based on your data and your data sets or the information. Let's say uh, uh, you want to train them on certain uh, research papers. So you you or data. So you can do that. For for the specialized case, I will say don't use ChatGPT or Bard, and don't rely on them. At least you can Perfect. use them as a junior student of yeah. for brainstorming, but not yeah. for like solving problems. Yeah, so there is one uh, science space co-pilot that helps people with um, summarizing the research papers and articles. Even when I worked with that, it wasn't that um, sufficient to answer some of my queries. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. Mean, these models are improving continuously day by day. So maybe yeah. after a year, the model will be trained further. So you will get better results. Yeah, so we have any more questions? Ashangam, sir, I hope you are fine. Walaikum uh, So, sir, my question is, why do people say it is not appropriate to use AI? I think it's it's very helpful, as you said before, it saves time and even um, it filters my of many ideas when we look at Pakistani education systems. Chat GPT is very helpful for students, even though uh, the teachers and professors don't allow it to use. Uh, and um, the plagiarism is very, very useful at the time when uh, when we use ChatGPT. So if there is a technology that shouldn't use, then why they don't teach us how to use it properly and professionally instead so, of stopping us to use it? So from the point of view of teaching, you need to understand one thing. Like, <clears throat> OK, you can have an article generated by, by writing a simple prompt. But teachers also want to develop your own writing skills as well. Teachers want. Teachers want to develop your analytical skills as well. So when they are discouraging at certain level, so yes, you can have uh, you can tell instruments to use AI uh, when you are doing uh, you know uh, industrial applications. But sometimes when students are in the learning stage, early learning stage, you have to you have to tell them like uh, to do things on their own so that they will go through the process. Uh, because uh, we don't uh, want a generation like which can't even write a paragraph on their own. We need to have people who can write on their own. We can, you know, they can use AI for help, but relying too much on AI will also not be helpful. And I discussed some of the things like uh, biases can arise based on the uh, data provided to the AI. So if you don't have your own analytical or writing skills, you won't be able to address these issues. So from the teacher's point of view, they want to develop your skills your own skills so that's where some of the some of the things come but uh, ex education experts are cons uh, you know creating ways where ai can be incorporated in the learning process and becoming but without you know damaging the ability of the students or capacity of the students to do things on their own 
Thank you, sir. Uh, so, sir, we have another question by Adnan, uh, who like posted this quite early in the webinar. He says, uh, considering the hype in NFTs in 2021, do you think they are still a thing in 2024? What happened and why the hype died down? So, again, with the NFTs, in what, what, what is happening, what was happening there is that people are focusing on the things like crypto punks or crypto kitties, which are speculative assets. But now the industry is maturing. Now it is going towards like things like NFT-based carbon credit certificates, supply chains, uh, supply chain NFTs, which can prove the uh, you know origin of some uh, supplying uh, some of some products. So things like these are now becoming uh, uh, becoming a part of blockchain uh, landscape, and they are they are becoming quite mature because unfortunately in Pakistani media. Uh, these non spectrum uh, these applications are not being being you know uh, are not being highlighted as much as they should be so this that's i think why i think uh, people like you uh, or other students involved in this cohort can you know uh, uh, do their job or do their you know contribute in a way that pakistani people can know about non speculative use cases of blockchain technology Perfect. Uh, all right. So there is one more question by Malaika Awan. She says scalability is still a challenge for many blockchain networks. What are your thoughts about it? Scalability. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Scalability and sustainability both are big challenges. But now uh, blockchain is like XRPL uh, and XTC, uh, and there are layer two solutions like CDC and other, uh, which are reducing the energy requirement involved or the computational requirement involved in block expanding the blockchain networks. So hopefully as the technology will evolve, uh, the, the cost and energy consumption and environmental cons issues will also be, you know, uh, considered and they will, so the situation, situation will improve more and it has improved a lot. All right. So Malaika, would you like to share something? Uh... She raised her hand. Any further questions? If there are, you can raise your hand and just share them. All right. Seems like Malaika. Malaika says, OK, it was by mistake. She is thanking for the answer. So I have a question over here. I read about your um, involvement in two major radio astronomy collaborations, the EMU ASCAP and the Wellaby ASCAP, if I'm not pronouncing them wrong. Uh, I would like to know more about those because that's quite intriguing. OK, these are not related to blockchain or AI. Uh, yeah. AI is being used in uh, in some way, but not uh, in that uh, which I've discussed. So I my basic, my my PhD is in astro, basically is, uh, is in astrophysics. So uh, I moonlight as an astronomer. I'm not a full-time astronomer, but I, I try to continue my work uh, in cosmology and astrophysics on side uh, of my regular industry engagements. So that is something uh, we, in, right. with EMU and ASCAP uh, and Wallaby, we are covering about most of the southern sky. And we'll yes. hopefully be observing millions of sources, galaxies, and then doing cosmological analysis. My, my my main focus is cosmology. Other teams are focusing on galactic astrophysics as well and stuff like that. My main focus is cosmology. So hopefully, we are going to study things like dark Perfect. energy, dark matter, and stuff like that. Yes, that is too much interesting. Uh, I read about it a little bit while uh, researching about your field uh, and your work in those two areas. Came to know that Willoughby is associated with uh, observing radio waves from half of the southern hemisphere uh, while the other one is associated with the entire southern hemisphere so i thought that's quite interesting mm -hmm. radio waves are being collected from the um, galaxies and stars to i mean what's the thing that ha that is happening over there yeah yeah so it's like you have optical images coming from uh, hubble or infrared images coming from uh, james Webb space telescope radio 
radio uh, signals give some different formation as well, especially for the distant and cold universe. So radio sky has its own benefits. So you, on different wavelengths, you get different formation because uh, you know there are different chemical and uh, processes being uh, involved. There are different spec uh, uh, at different wavelengths. So th that helps multi wavelength observation help in that. And radio astronomy is becoming a big big part of uh, uh, astrophysics. Space research, yeah. So thank you so much for the insightful session. Uh, I think there are no more questions coming. Or if there are, uh, we can uh, share them later on. And, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, connect with you. Thank you so much for the session. And we would like to just close it now. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. OK, I would end the meeting now. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.